Oh boy. Oh, <laughs> He's gone. It won't be long now, boys. Won't be long. Gosh. I think we were on like cheap flights or something like that, and we found that we could get to the Turks and Caicos cheaper than we could in a lot of like domestic areas. And I was like, dude, guys, yeah, four days. You said, what's the cheapest flight to get the bonefish we can yeah. find? Um, I'm itching. We've we've got our tax refunds in hand. Like, let's do a, a weekend trip burn our tax refunds as far as we can go, save, you know, save as much money we can go. So where can we do a DIY trip on a cheap flight? And it was Turks and Caicos. And I was like, man, that sounds like a sounds super bougie. Resort. Yeah, it sounds bougie. So what can we do to make it more like a trip we'd want to do? And I think that's when you started, you found out like middle Caicos would be the play, right? Yep. We said, we were, so we're gonna do DIY. We said, no guides. Let's get on there with some fly rods and figure it out. Yeah, we had three days of fishing. We got kayaks. Yeah, we were gonna use a, a local kayak rental service uh, where you know they thought they would they would they would kind of give us a good like nod where to fish in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. And um, in the end, they had a scheduling conflict that came up su super like last last second or whatever. And so you know we get the beach kayaks out of our backyard, two paddle boards, and strap them to the roof of our SUV we rented. Increase by ten percent. With one, one, one ratchet strap, right? And some spare line. Yeah, we figured it out. <laughs> and just got on Google Maps the night before, tried to find some fishy areas and, you know, pulled over to the side of the road. So yeah, you and Dan get everything rigged up. We got the kayaks. We start pulling them through the pine trees to get to the beach. I think Dan nearly has a heart attack. You okay, Dan? Yes. <laughs> Turns out we have a ton of gear, more than we expected, and pulled through. Dan was violently hungover, would be the best way to describe that. And uh, wheezing on the trail. Yeah. I think may, somebody may have thrown up at some point on the way in. We made it to the beach, though, and they're like, all right, here we go. Let's do this thing. DIY, figure it out. We've never been here before. We have no direction. Just like go over there, and there should be some flats. Assuming the tide's even right, which it probably wasn't. And uh, we started paddling. So, so what, two of them started taking on water. You had like a, a paddle about that was about this big. I turn around, I see Dan, he's doing circle. He's like, this damn thing won't steer. I was like, well, you got 500 pounds of water in the best fucking hole probably. And so yeah, we, what, we cross a channel, like tuck in our kayaks and then, then it opens up to this massive system. And we're like, okay, we, we can come at it a, a couple different directions. And so at first we really wanted to do it on foot. So uh, a couple of us break up and go on foot uh, for a good couple of miles. So we set off from where we dump the kayaks, we walk. I know two of us make it almost six miles uh, round trip, but we go all the way down. We fish a ton of water. We don't see a lot of fish. Actually, correction, we don't see any fish. Huh? And, um, then we're like, crap, our lunch is in the kayaks. We gotta go back. <laughs> and then the tide started coming up a little bit. And then we we had heard of these beautiful, hard packed sand flats would be very easy to wade in Turks and Caicos. And then we found out there's something called moguls. <laughs> and that was probably one of the worst wading experiences I've ever had. There yeah, was, so like when you say moguls, it's like these mounds of sand. Two and a right? half feet tall. They're cones repeating for miles and miles and miles. You hit the top of one, you slide down into it and you go just almost waist deep mm -hmm. and then step up again, waist deep, hip flexors gone, Yeah, not seeing any fish. And, and that's another point about the moguls is that it, not only is it, it just so strenuous to like hike through them, but that means the fish can sit in the troughs yeah. and then slide in and out these, and you'll never see them. These fish are not tailing. Yeah. It was kind of windy so we couldn't see anything, motion on the surface. It was, it was tough to see a fish. And so we, it was one of our prouder moments I actually think. We go back to the beach, we eat lunch at like 4 p.m. We're all beat to death and we all have a beer and some food and we say, you know what, this is, no, we're gonna give it one last send. And so three of us- Todd was going out yeah, pretty good. So three of us send it down the um, leeward side of the bay and um, golden light starts to hit. We laid down, slicked dude, off. kid you not, start seeing tails. Mm -hmm. And it's like for, for, the, for the dumb bone fishermen, that's what we need. We need to see the fish sticking their tails out of the water. You can literally see the sunlight coming through their tails. 
And so um, I think you were up on the rod. And so we, we, we start hunting these schools that we see from kind of a couple hundred yards away and um, start pursuing them, start pursuing them. And so it was actually kind of cool because we saw the, the group of bonefish break off. And so you follow a group this way and they kind of get ahead of you. And um, Tommy, who had already caught a fish, like he took the camera, he's like, dude, go over there. And he's like, I was like, what? And like, I had an extra rod and I was like, I didn't want to steal your fish. But he was like, no, 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 these are different fish. And so he like points me that way. And sure enough, they're tailing, they're happy, they're feeding, and it's like three or four fish. It's and tight so, up against the mangroves. Dude, they're too. so tight and you can see them. And so they, they're, they're working, they're working, they're working. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, I'm actually patient for once. So I walk out, I cut them off because I know they're going to bounce off this mangrove point. And you did your very conservative bend cast. Bend cast. Let's go 10 feet short. 10 All feet. Right, now, how about seven five feet? Five feet. And five feet. <laughs> We're going on them. <laughs> that was the one. And then, so when I finally, so they're coming out of the mangroves. And so I finally put it on them. And it's the moments we live for, right, in, in fishing. You twitch it once and they just go whoosh, and they, they just charge the fly. And like, and it's that moment you got lightning in your veins. You're like, oh my gosh, don't freak out, don't freak out. Just keep on moving the bait. Move it, move it, move it, move it. And they both come and fight for it. One grabs it stick him and I was just like man and I, you can hear it sadly enough I break the audio on the camera because I scream like I've never caught a bonefish before because it was just such a cool experience to watch him like go 30 yards chasing my fly stick him come all the way up and then pow, because we forgot we're in the Turks and Caicos these are not small bonefish yep. and so it was just a big boy I was giving him a little bit of too much juice pops the line literally i'm leaning all the way back so i like start falling in the water crumbled and then yeah and then just i'm in shambles hands on my knees and i'm just like it's that weird experience of like you're like it's so depressing but so exhilarating at the same time you're just like man uh then i look so, so like i'm in shambles i look over to you and like you're creeping and you're in hot pursuit and i was like okay well i mean these fish are done so i better go watch see what george is doing that's when we push back into the graveyard, yeah. right? Yeah, you go deep into the mangroves. Yeah, it was like six inches of water and there was just mangrove shoots every five feet. Just shoot, 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 shoot. I'm like, okay, if I stick a fish here, it's just gonna get broken off. <laughs> We're gonna try it anyways. We had some fish come right up, cast to him, come closer, I'm like, come closer, come closer, come closer. You see where he's at? He's on the, right there. And then one comes literally like over here. I was like, if, if I move, he's gonna, spook it was like red fishing in louisiana almost but they were bonefish they weren't spookies nobody's ever thrown at those fishing on the thing and i just went Whee! yep yep that's not that's a friend rod tip up just keep rod tip up oh god he ate it oh no starts <laughs> doing the triple eight circles grabs every row and i was like he's gonna break off it's gonna break off it's gonna break off Somehow I just stayed tied to him, didn't let him run, and I guess I was using maybe 16 pound or something, so it stayed on. I just kind of weaved him through and picked it up. Wasn't a big fish, but to save the day at the end, Dude. DIY, I made it that eight mile hike to the mogul is worth it. And you, and you think back on that day, we started with no knowledge, no idea if the kayaks were even gonna float, and we came away with three bonefish. Like that would be a good day, like just fishing with a guide yep. and and we did it with no knowledge you know no background or anything and so in my opinion that's a yeah that's a hell of a diy day and again that was the kayaks that like came with our airbnb we just like maybe they'll float had, had some mold on we'll them. on the end of the road and maybe try to find some bonefish flats so. Then the next day, we actually went to the spot we should have gone to right. with the real kayaks. We had the guy kind of point us that direction and went out and uh, slow day again to start. Mm -hmm. But then towards the afternoon, slicked off again. And then mm -hmm. we're like, where did our friend Tommy go? And then he was down that way. I was like, I think he's on some fish because he's not moving at all. Sure enough, we pull up and they're just pods of fish everywhere we look. Schools, pushers, wakes, tails, and we're like, okay, this is the spot. There were so many things that happened. So when we were working our way till, towards Tommy, uh, Dan and David started working the mangroves really close. Mm -hmm. And like, I think David thought he was fishing for sharks because the bonefish were a little bigger. And he spooked a bonefish, it ran into the mangroves, and then as it kind of came back out of the mangroves, he threw at it again and it ate. 
Yeah. And I just saw him like, and again, he hasn't caught a bonefish before. So like the line's zipping and he's like, it's pandemonium. He's freaking out. Dan's a hero. Cause Dan comes in and starts to like corral the fish. So it stays close and doesn't run into the mangroves. And Dan I'm was, running with the camera, like on my head. And he was like, I did everything wrong. I did not deserve that fish. <laughs> like, it's okay. You it's got It's called it. fishing. Sometimes you said, get my what cast you was Everything we sh the hooks I didn't even, didn't even hook set the fish. I should have lost it five times. Like, okay, just enjoy it. You're good. You got it. This drag was garbage. Yeah. Yep. Taking a dump. It was really cool for me because there's my brother holding his first bonefish, and it's a quality fish. Yeah. And he's like, I don't deserve this. I'm like, shh. Enjoy. It's enjoy this moment. Come you got your first on. your first bonefish, and so then we back out, and a, a school that was off of him. Uh, spooks and it, and it like kind of comes out and they start feeding again. They start working towards you. So they went out here and I just waited for them. I was like, okay, here they come. <laughs> it's like a good six county. <laughs> come up a little closer. And I start barely moving the fly, barely moving the fly. And then they do that thing when they come up, you know, all the tails go in <laughs> this little competition. Velociraptor. <laughs> okay, keep stripping, keep stripping, keep stripping, keep stripping. All of a sudden, come tight. They freak out. <laughs> Blast off and yeah, that was cool. That was super cool. And so, uh, and then, so we finally do make it over to Tommy and he was like, uh, and you know, when you have a fishing buddy who's abandoned you and they're not moving, something good is happening. Mm -hmm. We finally make it over and we realize why he hasn't moved. Cause there's just waves of fish Dude, coming in. Schools. Just like a, it was a damn highway. Yeah. So and we were almost like pulling like a, a, a steelhead move, right? Where we all post up hundred yards away from one another and just have these, these, these rounds of school coming, coming in. It's like and, a damn tarpon spot almost. Yeah. I'm on him, staked out coming towards us and then Everybody caught fish. Yeah. Dan caught a fish. You caught a fish. Tyler caught two or three. I caught two or three. Oh, yeah. So my, my two fish had like a different ring to them. So I'd broken one off yesterday, uh, the day before. And uh, and then the first fish <laughs> I threw out. So my, my brother grabbed the camera and I start running after the school because I hadn't seen a school yet. So you all hunted that thing down yeah, from like a mile. <laughs> yeah, y'all all were doing well. And I was like, dude, I've got to get on the board. And so this this pack of like six fish, they're moving this way, I'm moving this way, and it's we're still in mogul. So I'm working, I'm working, I'm giving them plenty of space so I don't spook them. But I literally walk them down for probably 300 yards until we meet at a point. Then, being bonefish, they turn and start coming back towards me. And so, where I had first about to go for my conservative cast, right, 10 feet away, I have to then crouch down, get super low, because I know they're gonna see me because there's nothing out, we're in the middle of this flat. And so I literally squunch down, get to the very like bottom where my like ass is in the water and I'm ticking, 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 ticking. And then I stick up. Yeah! Go to clear the line and wouldn't you know it, nice little bird nest of uh of uh, uh fly line right there and so you know bonefish they're taking off so i sprint forward to like try to wiggle the knot out with my fingers and i actually get it out so i get it out and i'm running 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 to give him room so that that he doesn't break off clear the line and then once it clears i lose my balance and so i like lean back a little bit and then just because again they're moguls eat and I just ski through the water because great. you know, again, you're gonna break it off. You step you... back and then you go forward. Yes. <laughs> and so I'm like face full of water and I literally just paw a mogul and move my fly rod forward, forward, forward because I don't want to break him off. Get it up in the air and he's still on. And, and like, I was literally gonna throw up by the time I landed it because I was like, it was like intense cardio, a lot of adrenaline, and then it's a quality bonefish. You always know when Ben's on a fish because he casts and then each strip he gets lower <laughs> and lower. And lower. I don't and want to lower. spook a fish, man. He, he's almost laying down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw that little tail flicker. I was like, oh God, he's on it. <laughs> he sticks it. He goes, oh shit. Pops back. Good dish. <laughs> Worth watching though. Uh, I mean, stuff. that's my favorite part is that you were laughing so hard you could hear it echoing off the camera. <laughs> I don't think I've ever worked so hard for a bonefish.